Well, it, it's, it's kind of an interesting question. It was a very delicate balance at the Media Lab, and the book may have painted a picture, uh, as books often do, that it was an easy thing, and that uh, big corporations <laughs> just gave us money and said, go for it. Yeah. Uh, it it's a coincidence that Jonathan is here. Uh, I, I know he's, he's in lean forward mode right now. Yeah. We're gonna, uh, <laughs> I mean, he, he, Jonathan heard this and he was like, well, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to um, betray any secrets here, but uh, Jonathan wasn't always here in Newton doing what he's doing here. Um, but at the time he joined the lab, he was a representative of uh, Telmex, uh, the Mexican telecommunication giant, uh, who were one of the funders of the Media Lab. And uh, he faced the problem as a representative of one of those funders of conveying value back to his company. I'm going to let him speak in a minute. It's very interesting. Exactly. Well, multiply that by about 80 or 90, which was the number of funders who were at the Media Lab. Uh, and it was a continual process that I had, which is why I'm actually only 28 years old. <laughs> and I look like this now. <laughs> because during that five years, I can only say that that was not easy. Particularly, and I, look, I'm not complaining. But uh, when the economic downturn hit kind of almost at the very beginning of my tenure at the Media Lab, companies tend to say, oh, well, this was nice giving money unconstrained in this way, where all these, you know, MIT undergrads and graduate students could go around and try crazy things and fail on my buck. But when 2008, 2009 hit, they weren't quite as happy to do that, right? And so I was constrained to trying to direct my students and faculty and others to pay more attention to the needs of these funders. So I guess what I'm saying is when, when times are flush, which they're not now, and they haven't been for a while, then there are sources of funding which find it very gratifying to give that money and say, go fail. But the minute the economy turns, they then have internal pressures. And the best I can say, I'm actually going to let Jonathan talk about it a little bit here because he did represent one of those sources and you know they paid a significant amount of money uh, to the media lab to let us play to let us play um, you have to work very hard um, and find a balance there but you know I'm gonna kind of be interested in thinking about how kind of the Jewish world um, could attract the kind of funding um, that would permit that kind of uh, unconstrained creativity environment of failure to occur because I haven't got that in my head right now uh, I know what happened at the Media Lab because, you know, digital technology as it has been evolving and now evolves is clearly important to large corporations. So if you could convince them, not only that it's important, they already know that, but that letting a group of wild and crazy faculty graduate students at MIT just go crazy and observe them is a good thing to do, you can make it. I, that's probably a, not as easy a task. So I'm saying I think my task uh, and my position at the Media Lab, although I'm going to say it was a little bit difficult, was nowhere nearly as difficult as you face in these areas here to attract that kind of support and funding. So